Welcome to the very first episode of our series called Show and Tell. So today what I'm going to be doing is going through what's called the user's mental model. So we're going to go through what that is, how you can think about it, why it's important. We're going to then hop on over to an interface and see how this actually works in practice and how you can track that in, in some users. And then we're going to give you a task where you get to actually go and do it yourself. And that task you can put in the comments below so I can go and comment on it and we can all have a great discussion. Everything that we're going to go over in this video, these are just small things that are associated with this topic. This is a, a collaboration, so please, if there are research, different methods that you use, please put them in the comments below. I'll probably try to go over some of these other techniques in other videos, but it's a time for sharing. So with that, let's jump over to a little model that I've put together for us to talk about this. So for this purpose, we are going to go through my mental model as I'm walking through this, but please, for the task, make sure you try to find somebody else to do this with you so you can see what their mental model is and maybe see how it changes from what you would do in these situations. The box that you're seeing is really um, the sweet spot where everybody um, is making decisions based on the information that you are showing them. So why are user mental models important? They are important because when you are making decisions on how to change or represent or display information and what information to display and how to display it, you have to understand to the best of your ability how the users think about that data, what data is important for them so that they can make a decision. This is actually something that I think a lot of information architects often forget about or they don't put enough emphasis on. So you should see on your screen a graphic that I've put together. Again, you can use this. It's going to be in the comments below. If you want to use it, please just cite me since I was the one who put most of this together based on a lot of the other research that I've done. For this video, we're going to be starting with the exploration part of, of this visual, and we're going to go through how people take a task or an intent that's something else we're going to talk about in this video and a lot of other videos we're going to actually have a whole video dedicated to user intent for the purpose of this video i am going to have the intent of looking for a playlist for a barbecue or for a uh, cookout and i'm focusing on the music genre here every video i'm going to be using a specific domain for the example so today we're going to be focusing on music but if there's another domain that you would like me to walk through the user's mental model, put it in the comments below. I'll definitely make a video on that. So for the purpose here, we're going to be going through uh, the user interface called Pandora. And so where we're going to start is the social environment. The top part of this graphic is all of the things that you can see explicitly on the interface. Everything below the line is the actual experience, the things that you move and you touch and you think through. So you're going to start with your discipline domain for today. That is music. I am looking for music. Uh, what is my, my background? What is my cohort? Those things do help me understand and, and interpret information. So, you know, what kind of background do I have? Am I an expert in music theory or am I just a casual person that's looking for music? Or did my mom tell me I have to come in here and find some music for a party and I'm angry and I don't really want to do that and I don't really care about music. All of those are totally valid and very plausible. Your cohorts are, again, my mom asked me to do this. That would be a cohort. Uh, your friends, your family, your neighbors, anybody that has subtle influences over you that you would go to for advice and who have been teaching you your whole life. That's really what a mental model is, is all of the beautiful experiences you've had in your life adding up to how you think and interpret things. On the below part, we have the method of search and your preferences. So these are things that are focused on, do you tend to go to the search bar first or do you tend to go to the curated content first? I am usually somebody that likes the data and I know search engines are not always accurate for what I'm looking for. Again, that's not news. It's just my own preference. So I do tend to go to the curated content first. 
pretty sure I'm in the minority on that though. Let me know in the comments below what you actually prefer because uh, I'm really interested to know if I am in the minority. The other things are preferences. So for instance, if I am using uh, Spotify, I can use a, a dark mode or a light mode, depending on what my preferences are. Once I get past that stage, then I am in the decision zone. So the decision zone is where you're looking at the actual works and the assets and how they're related to one another. So sometimes you'll see this with headings on a screen uh, where things are kind of bundled together and it kind of helps me understand like how this website or how this store, uh, if it's physical or how uh, my closet is, uh, if I have labels in my closet, is organized. Then you have query to metadata logic. So that means that you're looking at what was my intent and how well does the metadata on the screen, if you don't know what metadata is, it is literally the, the information on the screen. We will have a whole video on that later. And so what I'm doing is when I'm going through this information, I'm going to be looking at that uh, metadata and checking constantly, is it what I was expecting? Below the line, you're going to see query to subject indexing. So what that means is, did I type into the search engine or do I have a certain word in my head for the topic that I'm looking for? So for my uh, asset that I'm looking for, I'm looking for something that I can use at a barbecue. Then there's vocabulary structures. So whether that's the taxonomy on the side or how um, things are, are grouped according to subject, those are a little different than the metadata and the work asset relations because those are more like physical things that you can see. Whereas vocabulary is looking at, well, if they have different genres, uh, are those all grouped together? And which of those genres are grouped together in one playlist? That's the sort of thing that you're thinking through. There's the user, co user cognitive space. So that's what is your task? What is your interest? We already know what that is. I've got a barbecue coming up and I need some music. Uh, state of the moment. So that's where we're talking about, am I angry because my mom made me do this? Or am I really excited because my grandparents are coming over? They're going to be very far away from me because we're social distancing, but they're still coming over, so I'm very excited. Um, and what are the problems and goals that I'm looking for? So yes, I have a problem where I need music for uh, my, my party, but what if I'm looking for uh, music that will get people jumping and moving and partying? Or am I really looking for something that's going to make people chill and sit back and enjoy a drink? So that's kind of the intent uh, behind my original intent of just finding music. Uh, there's also uncertainty. So when you're t going through and you're looking at that metadata, or you're looking how things are structured, you're also trying to understand is it, is it what I'm expecting? Is it going to be trustworthy? Trustworthiness is a very important of information architecture. Information can so easily be skewed, misconstrued, be just bad. And so um, you're constantly going through decision-making tests and trustworthy tests. Also, what's your information need and what is your information behavior? So are you expecting the playlist to just give you a list of songs or are you actually expecting it to actually play the music? All of these things go into how you're going to make a decision ultimately for picking which playlist that you're going to look at. All right, let's go and see this in practice. Okay, welcome to Pandora. It's from a movie, I think, but I can't remember. Avatar? Maybe. Anyway, we're in Pandora. I do not know much about this uh, site. I, again, I have not used it a lot before. Again, what I'm going to be doing is a technique called think aloud and pay attention because this is what we're going to be doing in the task for this, uh, this video. So as I'm going through this, I'm going to be talking through what my thoughts are. And again, the reason I'm doing this is so that I can understand the user's decision points and what information they're taking to make those decisions. So here I'm looking at the screen and the first thing that you'll notice is I'm going to look center to the search bar, I'm going to go left and I'm going to see browse, my collection, now playing, and then I'm going to go down and I'm going to see featured playlist. The reason that people look center, left, down the left is because that is how most user experiences are set up today where the most important information is in those locations. But keep in mind, not all users are the same. 
Also, anyone that is uh, speaking a language that doesn't read from left to right, they might have a different user experience behavior. So make sure that you keep that in mind. We come from a multicultural, multilingual world. Don't forget that because everyone is important and you need to make sure that you understand that you're meeting all of your users' needs. So here, I'm still linking through my intent. And one thing I have to think about is, who's my audience? Who's gonna be at this party? If there's kids at the party, I need to make sure that there isn't any explicit language in the music. If I have maybe grandparents, it's an older generation, they might not be into very loud, rambunctious kind of music. So I have to keep that in mind while I'm going through this. So let's take it that my grandparents are going to be coming. Again, social distancing, not very close to me, but they're still gonna to listen to the music. So here I can see the featured playlists. I've got Tupac, okay, that's some, some classic jams. Silky Sheets. Well, let's not hope I'm doing anything with Silky Sheets at the barbecue outside. But, you know, that's maybe for a different intent. Rock Block Party, okay, that, that, sounds, that sounds more in tune with what I was looking for, but again, rock is not really their thing. Um, in the club, okay. Some, some good jams, but not for my grandparents. Post Malone, no idea what that is. And then R&B. Again, maybe I like that, but not for my grandparents. So I'm gonna keep going. Then I first see now, coming into the screen, recommended podcasts. Okay, so I'm just gonna skip on over this because it doesn't have anything to do with my intent. Now, it's interesting because Pandora has decided to put this as a featured piece of content because it's it's literally right below the fold. So below the fold means it's underneath the first thing that you see upon the first paint. The first paint means what shows up on the website first. So this is an interesting decision by them. It might mean that podcasts are very important to them and they want to uh, showcase it more so more people use it or they know that a lot of people use it and that's why they're showing it here. I, being a Spotify person, know that their podcasts are at the very bottom of the list. So it's interesting that the two uh, music uh, genres here, the two music interfaces are making different decisions. So that's something else that we can look at in a different video. But for now, not what I'm looking for. Okay, so new music. Okay, I'm not thinking they're into the new music. They're kind of like an oldies fan. Okay, so browse genres. Okay, so this is, this is good. So maybe there's a genre that'll help with this. Today's hit, nah, they're not into that. Country, they are not country fans. R&B and hip hop, more hip hop, R&B. Ooh, classic, classic rock. Okay, so they do like classic rock. That's kind of like an oldies thing. So that's a contender. So that's an interesting thing that users do now in interfaces is they actually, because of you know Netflix and other um, kind of platforms are teaching people, there's always something better, or at least that's what they think think and that's what the interfaces are trying to tell you so what that means is there's actually a lot of studies showing that people are doing more browsing than actually listening or interacting with what they're finding so i'm constantly going through and and putting the things into the category of maybe okay so classic rock maybe is what i'm looking for but i'm not quite sure yet so let's keep going Ooh, decades. Okay, decades. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is easy. This is easy for me because I have a decade in mind because of my grandparents and maybe their age or what they really liked. And I know they love the Bee Gees. Don't know much about the Bee Gees, but, you know, I know that they were from like the 60s or the 70s. So that, again, tells me I can use this decades um, to really help me understand what I'm looking for. Not looking for today, not in the country. They don't really like R&B or hip hop but they do have something for the 60s, 70s, and 80s. So this is interesting. How were those grouped together? So this is a really good contender and I feel safer with this option because I know that it fits the time frame of when they had music that my grandparents really liked. So let's go and look at that. All right, so now I'm looking at it and what I'm gonna do is start to look at the metadata. So I can see 26 million listeners. Okay, that seems like a lot of people are interested in this. It might seem like, you know, it's it's a popular, trustworthy, good playlist if that's what I want to use. All right, so now I can look at some of the sample sections that are in this and I'm seeing 
Midnight Confessions, Red Grass Roots. Ooh, Temptations. I know they like the Temptations. Stand By Me. Oh, that is such a classic. They love that. Oh, but that's interesting. Stand By Me by Benny King is on here twice. And it seems like it's both by the same artist and it's almost the same length. Hmm. So that tells me, gives me a little pause. Because what I'm thinking is, well, that's odd. Why is that? So it's either they are doing automated playlist creation and they just aren't doing a good job with um, du taking the duplication out of their lists, or maybe they are not really checking what is out there even though they're popular and being um, showcased. Because remember, this was on the first page that I went to with Pandora. Okay, so artists. So the artists here, we're seeing uh, Grassroots and Temptations. Again, these are the same artists that I just saw in the sample playlist. So it's not giving me a lot more information. So that's disappointing. But again, I see that um, these are the featured artists. So maybe these are the artists that are the most played in this playlist. So that does give me some information that I can go off of. Okay, so I think that this is going to meet my needs. If it does, I can go ahead and play it and make sure that it's going to meet the needs of the actual party so I can listen to it and make sure that it's good. All right, so um, I hope that was informative. I hope it was helpful. Um, that's a good example of what a think aloud uh, usually looks like. You do usually want to record it in some way, whether you're writing it down or you're recording it with recording stuff. Um, by the way, if you like this video, give it a like, subscribe, do the whole YouTube thing. I honestly would be very appreciative if you made comments um, to this because I think that hearing your perspective and, and some of the resources that you use for understanding users' mental models and how you use it is really valuable. So please share that. Um, now, for your task. So as I said, put all of this in the comments below. I'm going to show, over here, getting my getting that confused. Over here, I'm gonna show you exactly what to put into the comments. So pick an interface, enter any interface that you want, give yourself or your family member or your friend a task, and ask them to go through that interface, walking through their decisions and how they're making that decision. You know, we're gonna to try to make this a manageable thing that you can do probably within five or 10 minutes. So try to time box it for that because I don't want you guys to have to take too much time out of your day. But when we get this done, I'm going to go through the comments and I'm gonna comment on it and, and help you out a little bit with understanding what's going on. And we're gonna use this for another assignment that we have coming up later. Okay, so that is what I have for today. I hope you enjoyed it. So with that, Thank you very much for listening in. I do hope that you're enjoying these. Please give me feedback. Um, again, be kind and respectful to each other in the comment section. And I will see you next Tuesday where we will go through the other half of this graphic that we were talking about today.